Thank you for coming to my YouTube live about wheels. We are going to talk about wheels and the, the process of making wheels, um, how wheels make you feel. And it is my, wheels are my favorite thing. My, to, it's my favorite product to talk about, um, my favorite product to make, and the most exciting part of roller skating for me. So we're gonna go into the history, origin, and um, but first I'm gonna get like the, oh, you know what? All right. <laughs> I wanna make sure you can see this. Can you see what's in front of me right here? Okay, I'll pull it back. All right, so thank you for tuning in to my YouTube Live all about wheels. I'm Estrogen, and I'm responsible for all the product development at Moxie Roller Skates. So as, and I'm a skater myself, as I come, as I experience challenges in skating, I want to create a product to make it easier for me to learn things or easier for others to adapt to roller skating. So um, wheels is the easiest way to do that. And we're gonna talk about every wheel that Moxie makes and the origin of um, the line and a little bit of the history of wheels in roller skating. So I'm first gonna just get out like the cold facts and aspects of what makes a wheel a wheel and how it changes the feel of your roller skating experience. So um, what, they, what we advertise as an industry standard on the face of the wheel is typically, there's, you'll see two numbers. So we have the hardness and the diameter. What's not advertised is the width and the running surface. And I'll talk a little bit more about what those are. But they dramatically affect the feel of the wheel. And then um, speed and acceleration. And that is determined by the height of the wheel. So if it's a really, um, and height and the width of the wheel and also the shape. Um, so the speed of the wheel is affected by all these aspects and um, and then the shape and the performance so the intended use of the wheels um, So the higher so let's talk about the a scale the hardness so each wheel has a different formula It's made up so all wheels these days that uh, are used for outdoors especially are made of polyurethane and um, polyurethane was invented in the late 60s and um, it is a very resilient uh, com it's a very resilient material that makes that has changed skating since the 60s and made us able to use roller skates and skateboards as a way of transportation and rollerblades um, so the urethane comes in different hardnesses. So it's, uh, you can, the higher the, so there is a scale called the A, the, the, the A rating scale. And um, the durometer is a fancy term for the number that represents the hardness of the wheel. They start at 70, uh, 70 A and go up to over 100 A. The scale should be, should go up to 100 as the hardest. So um, some manufacturers have adjusted the hardness rating and made a B scale, which is 20 points under the A scale, uh, so that they can um, hone in on specifics of like very, very harder wheels. Um, but generally what's adopted in roller skating is the A scale durometer. So the durometer is the number that's next to the A representing the A scale. The higher the number, the harder the wheel. A 78A wheel is like the classic outdoor wheel that we make and most outdoor wheels are made, um, most specific to outdoor wheels are 78A. Um, a durometer that you would wanna use for dance or on a very smooth roller rink surface, especially wood that changes in the summer, it becomes softer. Um, you wanna use a much higher, num a higher A, so a much harder wheel, around like 97 to 101. And then right in between there, it really, so between 78 or 80 to 97, those, 
there's a whole range of hardnesses that will adapt to different smoother surfaces. So the higher the number, the harder the wheel, the smoother the surface, the more, the harder the wheel will be easier for smoother skating. So you, because we're, but oftentimes we skate outside, um, like on sidewalks and rough terrain asphalt, you want a softer wheel to absorb the cracks and pebbles um, on the sidewalks um, and rough surfaces. Just because a wheel is labeled outdoor doesn't mean that you can't take it indoors. It's going to mean that it's going to be much harder to glide on an indoor surface. So if you have, um, like if you take this wheel in the roller rink, it's gonna be harder it's gonna be very slow. So it's gonna be harder to push through. It almost feels like you're pushing through marshmallows when you're pushing through a hard wheel. I mean, it's gonna feel like you're pushing through marshmallows when you're on a soft wheel on a very hard, smooth surface like a roller rink. And then um, if something is late, usually we don't label wheels indoor wheels because you can use a harder durometer outside, for instance, skate parks. So skate parks are typically made of the surfaces either wood or concrete, and the harder the wheel, the, the easier it is to be agile and fast in a skate park. So we will move towards, actually, let me just tell you about the, so how I got into wheels in the first place, I'll try to tell this quickly, is, um, I started playing roller derby and someone told me if you want to get good really fast you'll use an outdoor wheel at practice and then just before the games you can turn it up by changing your wheels and using a harder wheel and then you'll be extra fast because it's so hard to practice in a soft wheel indoors that you're gonna you'll be so much faster when you finally switch to an indoor harder wheel for the games so I went out to the store and got a softer wheel to test this method and I got a thin wheel. And even though, so roller derby about in 2005, so 15 years ago, uh, they used to use a wheel that looked like this. And it's 43, 44 millimeters wide. Um, it's what we call a square shape. So the lip, the running surface almost goes to the very end of the wheel. Um, it's a square shape, you see that? Um, and it's, it's not as round or oval like some rounded wheels are. And um, it's very stable. It's super stable, wide surface. Um, it's not very agile. So when I went and got an outdoor wheel, it was really thin. It was, a, it was almost like a, like a this shape. So when, since no roller derby people were using wheels like this, I mean, since no roller derby people were using wheels outside of this, um, they were. I when I took a thinner wheel to roller derby practice, it was even though it was supposed to be harder because it was softer for training, it was so much easier to and more agile because it was thinner. So there was less surface area. There was less contact patch hitting the ground. So I was able to run on my wheels so much easier than on a thick wheel. Um, the thicker the wheel, the more grounded and more stable you'll feel. So that's why we start everybody on a soft, wide cruiser wheel on the lolly skates um, because uh, we're beginners, we're starting out um, on a rec, we want an all-purpose recreational wheel that's good for outdoors, um, that's going to, so I'm from the East Coast where the streets are not smooth like they are in California. And I, um, when I was first introduced to outdoor wheels, I went, I took those outdoor wheels out to the Strand, which is like the boardwalk here. And um, I went to the beach and I saw this really, really old person with purple, purple skate wheels with purple hand weights and um, a purple scrunchie in her hair. And I, she was, must have been like in her 80s. And I just thought, wow, that's like, that's a life extension. Like, look how happy she is. Um, she was exercising and, and real and elderly. And I just thought, I want to be that. I want to, I want to be physically, like, 
physically joyous and in my body and feeling great for as long as I can live. And um, so I was really inspired by this image and I thought, the East Coast doesn't know about this, do they? Like, I thought that when, um, so the rollerblade boom had happened when I was uh, like six and rollerblade wheels were marketed as, you know, they, they were softer wheels, outdoor wheels. And um, I thought rollerblades were a new invention. Um, and they were in a way, but what made them so adaptable and what made, it, they really took roller, the idea of the roller rink and took it outside uh, was the soft wheel. So you can skate anywhere, any place with a soft wheel because it absorbs the cracks and the shocks and the earth around you. Um, pebbles don't get in your way. Um, they're cruisery. And rather than, and if you put an outdoor, if you put an indoor wheel outside, it almost feels like they're going to break. Um, they're really rumbly. And that's something that over time you can get used to as you're more skilled and more balanced on your, in your skates. But, um, starting out, it's much better. I, in my opinion, it's so much easier and more friendlier if you can't feel the earth under, like you can't feel how rumbly the ground is. It's almost like putting earmuffs on your ears and listening to like loud music. Um, you can really pay attention to like your balance on the ground and not be thrown off so much by the pebbles and the rumble. So, Long story short, <laughs> uh, outdoor wheels are soft and they're measured by in durometer, which is uh, a number that is represented with a little a. And usually it's on the surface, it's on the outside of the, the front face of the wheel. The other number that we advertise is the height and the diameter of the wheel. Let me just make sure I didn't. So, did everybody get that? So outdoor wheels are soft, cruiser friendly. Indoor wheels are hard. They're all represented by a number on the A scale. The higher the number, the harder the wheel. The lower the number, and those are around in the 70 range, the softer the wheel. Okay, moving on to another aspect of um, wheels is the diameter. So the height of the wheel, the higher the wheel, the taller the wheel, the further away from the ground you are. So the further away from the ground you are, the less stable you feel, the less grounded you are. So um, if you're on, like for instance, dancers, like I really always aim for whatever I'm using the wheels for, I want my natural born feet to feel like They've sprouted the right wheels out of the balls of my feet and my heels. And in dance skating, you know, it's very different than like outdoor fitness skating. If you're like skating to, for cardio or you're going on a long beach path, you it feels really good to have the wind blowing in your hair and to see many scenes in a short period of time. So like a big wheel is going to make you cover a lot of ground faster. And that's great for for that style of skating. But for dance skating, for instance, we're not, there. it's not long stride skating. It's very, um, you almost, if you're in the middle of the roller rink, you, you'll you notice that there's people just practicing standalone tricks. So like more like shuffling or shuffling from side to side or spinning. And then on the outside of the rink, they're, they're um, going in a big circle. So there's kind of two styles of indoor dance, indoor roller rink skating. There's the people that are in the middle practicing little movements where you're not really traveling. And then on the outside, you're traveling. But you're never going really fast because there's music playing. And it, it, it requires a lot of skill. And um, it requires a lot of skill to be able to skate slowly and dance slowly. And the music changes. Sometimes there's fast songs and you can really pick up and get going. And sometimes there's slower music. And that's when like you're really just feeling the music and moving slowly. So the wheels that we use at the roller rink are typically shorter, very, they're very, they're short. So you feel much more grounded because you're shuffling. 
your wheel, you're shuffling your skates, you're stepping rather than doing long, strong strides. So the difference in a wheel, you know, there's a there's many aspects and like big differences between wheels, as you can see. So I'll get in more into the height of the wheel, but the higher the wheel, the more loftier, loftier you are, the less ground control you're gonna feel. The shorter the wheel, the more ground control you're gonna feel, but also the slower you're gonna go. So the height of the wheel affects acceleration. And acceleration is like how fat, how quickly it's going to take to get you up to full speed. So if you've got um, a really big wheel, the acceleration is going to be slow. But over time, you're going to start to roll faster because the wheel is bigger, so you're covering more ground. So it takes less total turns on um, total turns on the floor to be able to cover more ground where on a small wheel, it's going to be quick acceleration, it's gonna max out faster. So that's really great for dance or even for filming because you wanna get up really quick and close to the action of um, the person skating. So you want like a shorter wheel. But for filming, you also don't wanna hear the wheels when you're filming so, because it's about the person performing the trick. So you want a softer wheel that's also short. So you've got quick acceleration, but you can't feel the, the ground underneath of you. You're not shaking the camera. But for dance skating, um, you want to really feel the ground because you are putting all, because you, you really wanna feel the ground because you're putting your weight and balancing your weight on sharper corners and on, on smaller, smaller spaces. Are we following? Let me just check the chat. Thumbs up if we're following. Remember, I'll be a answering all these, any questions that you have at the end. Give me a thumbs up if you're following. So we're covering, we just covered the hardness of the wheel and the diameter. Oh, awesome, love it. Love the thumbs up, thank you so much. Okay, cool. All right, so moving on. Um, speed and acceleration. So the the larger the the larger the wheel, the faster you're going to be able to go. But over time, the shorter the wheel, the fast the slower you're going to go over over long periods of time. Over, <laughs> after you full accelerate uh, fully accelerated, you're going to be slower because it's a shorter wheel. So you've got more turns to cover more area. All right. Next, um, let's see. We can talk next about the shape and the performance and the compound is really what um, is is really what makes wheels change. Uh, so just it's it's not the the you've got the higher the number the harder the wheel. But if your wheel is made of a poor quality, um, then the wheel may have a lot of impurities inside of it. So manufacturers that really don't care about, you know, they just want to sell a lot of wheels and they're not doing the research and development with skaters to get approval for their wheels. And they just kind of like trust the, the urethane suppliers to just pour the urethane, then the wheel's not going to perform as well. You really need skaters uh, like me and my friends to test the wheels and to tell the, the manufacturers whether these compounds are good. And we really, what I found is you need, you need to test a lot of different compounds because people want to cut, like not people, but just manufacturers, different manufacturers, you know, the, the less quality of the wheel, the, um, the less, the, the, the less pure the wheel is. So let's talk a little bit about urethane. Um, wheels used to, in the very beginning of roller skating, we had metal wheels. Not we, as in I wasn't, I didn't, I wasn't alive then. But the first wheels that like we used for roller skates were metal. They were sketchy. Uh, I have a friend that, huh, that was like a world champion speed skater, freaking killing it in the 80s, who had put on a metal wheel, metal skate, just to like mess around and show his friends. Uh, you know, that he could skate in any skate and he like bombed a hill and he ended up breaking his femur on a metal skate, metal wheels. Metal wheels are sketchy. We don't use them anymore. They rumble like, 
like horribly on the ground. So we just don't use metal wheels anymore. The evolution uh, of the wheel has gone from metal to wood. And I have, um, I have a friend named Shirley Insane in Florida who was telling me about uh, her speed skating uh, career. And she remembers when the original outdoor wheel was the wooden wheel. So to train when the rinks were closed or um, when the rinks were closed, she was constantly training for speed skating, which was a popular sport in the 80s that really doesn't, it's, it, it's not very popular anymore, but they used to race around a circle on a, a wide wheel. Um, and to train, she used to train on out wooden wheels, um, but she said they sucked because when you hit a puddle, you it would the wood would and the wood would splinter and um, it would warp if you got them wet if you hit a puddle. So wood ended up, you know, um, in the fifties, surfers would take roller skate wheels like uh, clay ones and. Um, clay wheels, wood wheels, and put them on the bottoms of surfboards. Um, but eventually, like all those wheels, they weren't very fun. They weren't absorbent. You couldn't cover a lot of ground. So uh, when urethane, what, urethane was invented in the 30s, but in the 60s, it actually came from Virginia. Um, there was a guy that went to uh, Virginia Tech. He had a family friend that had a wheel factory, and they were making a lot of, the, a lot of urethane wheel factories make like caster wheels and you know wheels are used for everything not just roller skates and um anyway uh he took the wheel the urethane and brought it out to california and urethane became polyurethane became a big sensation in skateboarding and my dad tells me that he remembers in the 60s when urethane came out and it was just the jam like he remembers going from like you know, old clay wheels to urethane wheels and be able, able to do handstands down hills on a skateboard. And um, now that's all we use is polyurethane. And there's all different kinds of qualities of urethane. And I just need to tell you that the urethane that is American made is the very best urethane. Um, we have nailed it. Skateboarding is what has really was most popularized here in California and the urethane that is made in California and made in the United States and it is the highest quality urethane. So we're really lucky and fortunate that uh, Moxie skate wheels are made by quality made in America urethane. Um, all the classic wheels are made here in California. The, so I'll go into like why we made what we made. Um, you know, the first wheel that I made wasn't a moxie wheel, um, but I'll maybe get into that. The first um, moxie wheels that we made, I, I really wanted. I had a, I thought that maybe. Um, God, I'm such a storyteller. <laughs> Sorry. I thought like. Rollerblades were an invention because uh, I didn't know much about urethane and but rollerblade really pop like inline skates popularized uh, outdoor softer compounds and When I first saw that skater that uh, like elderly lady skating on the beach I just thought wow the East Coast really needs to know about this like roller skates are freaking cool they feel completely different than inline skates do. And we weren't told about this. They didn't sell, at my local roller rink, the spin around uh, in line Lexington, Pennsylvania, did not sell skates. They didn't sell outdoor wheels, for sure. And I was wondering if maybe, I don't know, maybe it's just my conspiracy brain. I thought, did roller rinks just not want us to own the experience? Did they want us keep to keep us inside and to keep us renting their skates instead? Like, God, that's so, that sucks. Like, I really want the whole world to be on wheels because it's like the most practical way to get around. And it's so fun. There's so many different ways that you can use roller skates. I'm going to make outdoor wheels popular again because this is a no-brainer and they're and skating really when moxie started back in 2008 outdoor skating was not popular so we or i chose to use this um softer cruiser wheel 
and all of our skates come with outdoor wheels and it's because it's not limited. So you can use an outdoor wheel inside and it's going to be a, um, you know, it may be a harder workout, but you can always use an outdoor wheel outside and uh, get, you know, get to work on an outdoor wheel. Um, all right, but then people and our skills, like we became more balanced and we started taking our skates to the skate parks and we started loving dancing to music and we've found different ways to use roller skates. So we needed to make an indoor wheel. And um, the indoor wheel that we made was, you know, we, uh, was a hard wheel. It's what, what I call the trick wheel. And I call it the trick wheel because it's like, this wheel, when you've got a wider wheel, it makes um, turning harder. So a narrower wheel, we're going to go into the widths again. A narrower wheel will make it so that um, so more agile. So you can pick up your feet, you can pick up and go, you can pivot easily, you can turn, you can balance on the, the, ang the sides of the wheel, the corners of the wheel. And so we made a 97A wheel. And I'm gonna go into, um, so a 97A is, is not too hard to go outside on, and it's not too soft to really like go, like really skate around the rink and feel fast. So we picked a, a, a middle of the road hard wheel to make, and we made it in um, 55 millimeters, so it's much more grounded than our, um, than our 65 millimeter outdoor wheel. And then we also have um, a 59 millimeter version, so that's a little bit taller. And um, they're both made of 31 millimeters wide. So there's, there's, a, um, there's another aspect of wheel width, and that is the running surface or contact patch. So um, we also have, so we've got the trick wheel and these are made for indoor dance, all purpose indoor or trick skating. You can use these outdoors because the quality of the urethane is really, it's a very high quality urethane. It doesn't break down. Uh, it doesn't um, flat spot easily. It, um, all of our urethanes are like the highest quality. When they give me a choice uh, of different compounds, I'm like, I make a note that these ones are the mo like these ones are the m the highest quality, and then I go out and test them. And typically, the ones that don't wear down and feel the best on most surfaces are of higher quality. And those are the, those are always the urethanes that I choose to use when we make skates. Um, all right, so contact patch. There is we also have a hybrid wheel. So a hybrid wheel is a middle of the road softness. Um, the higher the number, the harder the wheel. This is 92. What's advertised on the outside of the wheel is two numbers. The hardness, which is measured in A, and the diameter, which is measured in millimeters. But what's not typically advertised, unless you really do your research, is the width of the wheel. The Funday wheel is, um, it's a 92A, but we don't advertise it because the quality of the wheel, it performs faster than a a typical 92A compound. So the quality is high quality urethane. I've tested it all throughout Europe uh, because European streets are, well, there's more history in Europe than there is here in California. The streets are, um, they're more used and the, they also have different textures. Uh, and also in South America, some countries in South America like Argentina, the sidewalks, almost match the texture of the buildings. So when you're skating, the texture of the sidewalk is constantly changing. So the nine, this Funday wheel is made to skate out your door and to the skate park regardless of where you live. Um, this compound is high quality, it's 92A, and I'll talk a little bit more about the shape in a minute here, but to compare all the Moxie wheels, you've got the trick wheel that's hard, and we, it comes in a short and a tall. You've got the uh, classic wheel that comes stock on all of our lolly skates, and it's soft and wide and cruiser friendly. 
And then you've got the fun day wheel, which is the middle of the road wheel made for skate park skating. So this is like, I wanna say it's a great travel wheel. I've traveled all around the world with this wheel because you don't wanna constantly be switching your wheels, especially if you're traveling. Like it's, for me, it's easy to lose like an axle nut. Um, it's easy to lose a skate tool and you kind of want to be like, you know, stuck with something that you can depend on in a worst case scenario situation. And, uh, and also like, I just, <laughs> I skate so much that I want an all purpose wheel, something that I don't have to constantly change. I don't think that's lazy. I think that's practical. And that's why we made the fun day wheel. All right. We're going to talk about the running surface. So, this wheel seems thinner and you, this, this wheel seems a lot thinner than it is actually the, the total width of this wheel is thinner than the fun day wheel. But the contact patch or the running surface is an aspect of the wheel that will really change the feel. The contact patch on our trick wheel is uh, wider than the contact patch on our fun day wheel. And I'm going to tell you why. So the total width of the fun day wheel is 33, 30, uh, sorry, 35 millimeters. And the contact patch is 18 millimeters. So you've got 35 total width, and then you've got 18 of the, the part that actually touches. So let me get up closer. So this, this wheel appears to be wider. This wheel is, appears to be thinner. But the actual patch of the wheel that touches the ground is thinner on the wider wheel to, for more stability. And um, why, I'm sorry, wider on the thinner wheel for more stability and thinner on the wider wheel for more agility. So, um, the contact patch will really make a difference in the feel of the wheel. The wider the wheel, the more grounded you're going to feel. So the harder it is to quickly pick up your feet. And the narrower the wheel, the total wheel, the more agile you're going to feel. And the wider the contact patch, the more, uh, the less, you, the harder it is to pivot. And the narrower the wheel, the easier it is to pivot gonna take a little coffee sip and make sure that I'm not missing anything does that make sense everyone give me a thumbs up if you're following me when it comes to running surface of wheels because it is very important thumbs up if we're following you just joined all right if you just joined we are covering wheels higher the number so we've got a uh, durometer which is the hardness of the wheel. Um, outdoor wheels are softer. They're in the 70 to low 80 range. And on the uh, indoor wheels or wheels that are made for dancing and ramp skating, they are, the high, they are, are of a harder number in the late in the higher 90s and 100s. So the higher, so they're measured on an A scale. The higher the number, the harder the wheel. The lower the number, the softer the wheel. The scale goes to a, from 72 to a 100. There are brands that use a B scale. Uh, that B scale is B, I believe, stands for bones. And that wheel scale is 20 points lower. And that's because the harder skating, the harder wheels feel, you have more sensitivity. So because the scale ends at 100, you, it really doesn't make, it's supposed to be the hardest. So they've adjusted their scale to reflect and to zoom in on finer details of harder wheels. But in roller skating, we use uh, the A scale. And um, what's advertised on the wheel are two numbers, the hardness, which is uh, A, and the diameter, which is um, in millimeters. The taller the wheel, the further away from the ground you will be. So the more lofty the experience feels, the, the less balance, the, um, the, less, the less ground control you're gonna feel. Um, the shorter the wheel, the more ground control you're going to feel. All right, um, let's see. 
check in the chat here. Uh, generally harder number, like the harder wheels are faster and the softer wheels are slower uh, because they absorb more. Um, weight, like the weight and how much pressure you're, and how much muscle, really how much strength you have. So the harder you are, the more muscle you can put into the wheel, the, the, the softer the wheel, the slower they're going to be. And that's uh, because you're putting more pressure on the wheel. So the, the, the wheel's not going to roll is true. The harder the wheel, the more true the wheel will roll. So the tr a true roll means that it wobbles, it doesn't wobble, um, and wobbling happens when you exert a ton of weight onto the wheel. Not, and I mean by pressure. When you pressurize the roll, then it's going to be less of a true roll. Um, all right, height. So you can go too short. So the tallest wheels are like, the, wheel, the, the most standard, I would say, in roller skating is about 57. Uh, we have 59 wheels. The trick wheels are 59. They can go up to about, um, well, we've got a 62, uh, 65 wheel. Many wheels are made in 60. Uh, bowl skating, there's six, bowl skating is around 57 to 60. And um, you can, like, you can go too big. When you've got a wheel that's too big, like uh, like these are 70 millimeters, 70, 70 to 75 millimeter wheels. These wheels will touch the mounting bolts here and will drag. So you do want to stick to like something that's 65 and under. Um, you can also go too short and anything under like a 50, uh, 48 maybe is going to, um, like the kingpins could drag, so you would need like a special plate to compensate for um, too short of a wheel. We do have a small, short, stubby outdoor wheel that's made for outdoor skating, and that one is on is on our beach bunny. Um, we tighten the wheels so that the skate wouldn't roll away. Um, but it's a really great outdoor dance wheel. These are the beach bunnies. The ones that, they aren't sold aftermarket yet, but we are working on it. Um, aftermarket means we sell them separately after you after the, the stock components. So like, uh, you can purchase them separately after you order your stock package of skates. So aftermarket wheels are like the fun day wheels. We don't offer these on a stock package unless you order them specifically through your skate shop that way. Um, trick wheels are aftermarket wheels unless you order a special package. Um, so these ones come stock on the lollies and uh, our skate park packages, you can choose between uh, the trick wheels or the fun day wheels. The trick wheel is our all purpose indoor wheel that's great for dance skating and ramp skating. Comes in two different sizes, 55 and 59 and they're 97A and the running surface on these are 20 millimeters. The running surface on the Funday wheel is 18 millimeters, and the running surface is the actual surface that touches the, the ground. Um, the width of the wheel is going to give you stability. So the wider the wheel, the harder it is to turn. The narrower the wheel, the easier it is for agility. You can sometimes feel too, if a wheel is too wide for you, you might feel weighed down. If a wheel is too skinny for you, you might feel like you can't control them. So you want to test out, like wheels are so freaking awesome because like you will expire all your tricks or maybe you're looking for inspiration or you're doing the same thing and you're not inspired. And like wheels are the fastest way to find inspiration because they change everything up a little bit. Um, the if you get if you've been if you're used to this wheel this is a soft cruiser friendly very chill cruisy wheel it's soft it's you don't feel a lot of the ground there's it's like listening to easy listening music when you go to like a thinner wheel it's like dramatically different you're like oh okay now there's like i got something to work with i can spin now i can pivot i can run around on my wheels so um like if you're Bored, if you're bored and you're kind of tired of the wheels that you've got, switch it up. If you're used to a hard wheel, like switch to a soft wheel. Every time I go to the Moxie 
classic outdoor wheel, I'm like, dang, these are so good. Like, I need to remember how fun these are and appreciate them because they're like rolling trampolines. They're so resilient. They're so soft. There's, there's, no, you don't feel anything under your feet rumbling around. I love our classic outdoor wheels because they're just like so chill. All right. Um, let me check the chat real quick. Give me a thumbs up if you're still following. This is really awesome. Okay, I can go to the hubs, yes. All right, so the hub, um, all right, so we've got acceleration. We talked about the width. We talked about the contact patch, um, the wheel shape affecting the size of your contact patch. So rounded wheels also make less contact with the pavement. So we'll talk about the hubs. Someone asked about hubs. Um, a round wheel makes less contact with the pavement. A wide wheel is gonna make more contact. So it's gonna be harder to turn on a wide wheel. You're gonna feel more grounded, more stable. With a, um, a wheel that is more rounded, you're gonna feel less of the width of the wheel. So if it's wide with less contact patch, you're going to feel stable, but less ground, like not so grounded or stuck in the pavement. Where um, if you've got a narrower wheel with a wide contact patch, you're going to feel light on your feet, um, but you're, and you're still going to be agile, but it's going to require more balance. Um, the lips of the wheel also change. Like, we'll get into where next. All right, back to the question. The cores of the wheel. Some wheels have no cores. And, um, like, this is going to sound crazy, but I think I'm like, I don't know, just really sensitive. I'm a super sensitive person. I, uh, feel, I feel like I feel everything. Um, and I, I really like, like I'm the one of the, you know, I'm one of those weirdos that can f like feel that I feel technologically sensitive. Like if my Bluetooth is on, like I can feel it. Um, I can feel technology. Like when I go out into nature, I'm immediately like, whoo, like I just feel less bogged down by other energy. So uh, the reason why I state that is because the hubs make a difference to me. I can feel the hub. Like I can feel the similarities in the, I can feel the similarities of the like chicks and bulls ver like vertex wheel and the funday wheel because they have such a similar core. So the cores of the wheel make a big difference. Um, like it's the, it's the, the urethane makes the biggest difference, but the core of the wheel also makes it. I mean, for technologically, I don't, for sensitive people, you, I can feel the cores of the wheels. So um, I really enjoy an organic feel of a wheel. So the less core or the, the more the core matches the hardness of the urethane, the better, the more organic the feeling it is. So. Uh, the reason why they put core inside the wheels is for stability and integrity and the roll. So if you've got a soft wheel, you really need a core because the wheel is going to wobble on the axle otherwise. So we need to put wheel, we need to put cores inside of softer wheels so that it doesn't wobble so much. Um, but on a harder wheel, uh, on a harder wheel, the core, you want the core to match the hardness of the, uh, of the urethane. The larger the core, the more you feel the core and the hardness of the core. And the smaller the core, the more urethane you feel. So a core really controls the, the, rule, the, the roll, the trueness of the roll, the integrity of the wheel shape. And um, like back in the day, we used to use aluminum wheels so that we could feel more of the urethane and less, and so that there was less wobble and movement here in the inside core of the wheel. Um, feeling the urethane, does, uh, sorry, I just saw a question pop up. Does the feeling of the urethane 
Does uh, Flames92, does feeling urethane mean you feel the squish of the wheel? Yes and no. Like feeling the urethane means that you feel the quality of the wheel, like how the, um, the material. So not all urethanes are created equally. Some urethanes, you know, there's many different kinds of urethanes. And it means that you're feeling the trueness of the actual compound and how it reacts to the ground. Uh, so an aluminum core is not going to flex. However, it's going to add a lot of weight. So I like a light feel, especially when I'm outdoor skating. I want not a lot of weight. I want the lightest skate possible. Um, when I'm flipping an avert ramp, I don't mind so weight because I can actually feel the weight in my feet. So I can feel like your head and shoulders you know, when you're doing a backflip and a vert ramp, your head and shoulders, or airing, your head and shoulders really dominate the trick. They like put you in the right direction for the trick. And then the wheels, you know, if you feel a little bit of weight in your skates, you can feel the skates. So you've got more connection to the movement. But when you're outdoor skating, you don't want a lot of weight in your skates. So the lighter the wheel, the better you feel when you're outdoor skating. Okay, so did I cover the question of cores? Um, there's some interesting things that you can do with cores. Personally, I want to. I like the. I'm a. You're, I'm like polyurethane. insane. Like I love urethane. I like to geek out on it, and I want to feel the urethane the most. Um, all right, let's go into. Dang, I'm almost in 52 minutes in. Uh, hope I'm not talking too much. When I first, like, when we first, when I first made a wheel, I remember, like, sitting down with the mold makers, and they're like, all right, so what, um, what colors, what, what colors and graphics, you want to talk about colors and graphics? And I was like, what? Like, what about me makes you think I care what this looks like? And then they were like, oh, well, you make skates in, like, ten different colors, don't you? Or you make skates in different colors, isn't that, like, your thing? And I thought, oh, okay, I, I get what you're trying to say. But no, I really care about the feel. Like, I like, you know, like, I like colors. I li like looking at light and looking at rainbows and different colors and having choices makes me feel good. That's why they come in all different colors. Um, and I don't want to talk about, gr like, yes, we'll get to graphics and the colors because, like, I really want, you know, to look down at my skates and feel proud of, like, you know, they're an artistic piece. They're awesome looking, but, uh, like, really I want to know, like, I want to make the very best feeling wheel possible. So, no, that's not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the width of the wheel, the shape of the wheel. The shape of the wheel changes everything. So we made uh, our first indoor, like we made this wheel to react to dance and also ramps because um, we needed an indoor wheel and we were using them both for ramps and dance. So that's why we call it the all purpose trick wheel. And it's got, um, it comes in, it's cut on the inside so that it's easier to lock in for grinds. And the same thing for the fun day wheel. Uh, it's not a square shape. If you can see, there's a bevel here, a rounded out bevel. Um, the lip of the wheel makes a big difference. So if you've got like a wheel with a really sharp lip, this is going to wear down quickly. And uh, you're not going to, you know, you've got so little of an area to pivot on. And, and since it's so wide, this really just doesn't make sense for trick skating because it's wide and grounded and it's got a really hard corner. So it's going to wear down very quickly um, if you use it outside or for trick skating. So we used this, we, the fun day shape comes in on the inside and on the outside so that it's... Uh, so that you can skate in it outdoors, um, and you can also you like you can use this for going onto the coping, uh, rolling along the coping. Um, it's easier for trick skating. So the shape of the wheel makes a big difference. Um, yes, skateboard wheels used to. Oh, sorry. Here's a skateboard wheel. Um, you can see that this is worn down, where the other one is not. So it started out like this, like a sharp corner. And then this one wore down. The pattern that you want to, so you want to rotate your wheels regularly, like, you know, once a month. If you're skating, if you're skating a couple times a week, 
two to three times a week. Rotate your wheels once a week, once a month. Um, you want to rotate them in an X pattern. And that's the reason why is because the wheel that you use the least is the back outside wheel. The one that you use the most is the front inside wheel. So you'll notice that the front inside wheel is going to wear down the quickest and you want to switch that to the back outside. So we rotate our wheels in an X. Um, yeah. And uh, let's see, so really bouncing around here. Let me check the chat, see how we're doing. Um, Oh, yes, uh, skateboard, skateboard, we, these wheels were retrofitting skateboard wheels now for roller skate purposes, for, we're retrofitting skateboard wheels for roller skating because uh, um, we are doing, we're skating in, in skateboard places and using them in the same ways that skateboarders do. And all of our wheels are made in similar places. Um, to answer your question, can, you can't put, skateboard wheels on roller skate axles because the um, the width inside, it's called the bearing seat. So it's called the bearing seat because that's where the bearings sit inside of the wheel and the space in between the skateboard wheels is uh, too wide for roller skate axles. So that's why we make roller skate wheels for roller skating. You can put roller skate wheels on skateboards. Uh, you just can't put skateboard wheels on roller skate axles unless, yeah. Um, I'm going to, now that it's almost 10, uh, we've talked, I blabbed for an hour, told you a bunch of stories. I apologize if I rambled. I tend to ramble a lot. Uh, please, if you have any questions, I've got some friends on this chat that are going to be consolidating some questions um, so that I can answer. And um, yeah, let me just uh, go through. Street, uh, let, yeah, I'll so we talked about the trick wheel, the fun day wheel, the parks wheel. So this is our park wheel. We're coming out with another park wheel. Uh, and just as soon as we get out of uh, this crazy COVID-19 times, um, we're going to be releasing a really exciting wheel. And, uh, but right now we've got this fun day wheel, all purpose wheel, great for leaving your, like going, skating outside and skating right to the skate park, having fun at the skate park, and then going and getting lunch with your friends, uh, using the streets and sidewalks to get there. Uh, that's what the fun day wheel is made for. Um, you can call it the lazy people wheel or the travel wheel. Um, then we've got the indoor trick wheel and the indoor, uh, the hard indoor trick wheel. Um, and you can use this for outdoors because it's made of a high quality urethane. It comes in short and tall. A uh, tall wheel is going to feel lofty and a short wheel is going to feel more grounded. A narrow wheel, so you can't just look at the wheel and say that it's narrow and, and, and judge its feeling because it's really the contact patch that's touching the ground that's going to make you feel different about the wheel. So a wider wheel is going to feel more stable, more grounded, um, but a wider contact patch is going to feel more stuck than, than agile. A narrow wheel is going to uh, feel more agile, quick feet is going to feel easier Easier, you can pivot more easily and um, the by looking at this um, these wheels look narrower they are if you measure from the out the inner outside to the inner outside on both sides uh, you will measure 31 millimeters wide however the contact patch is 20 millimeters so that is wider than this one wheel that appears wider. Um, it's wider for more stability, but the contact patch is 18 millimeters. So you're gonna feel more agile on a, sta on a, on a wider, you're gonna feel more agile because the contact patch is thinner here. So we kind of um, compensate contact patch. We change the contact patch for widths of the wheel so that you can feel more freer. And yes, uh, those are our indoor wheels that we make. I was going to move on to something else. We talked about uh, lips, you know, the, um, the roundness of the wheel. There's less contact patch on a round wheel, so you're going to feel more freer. Um, wheels started with metal and then wood and then moved to urethane. Um, 
Mm -hmm. Make sure I'm not missing anything. We talked about hardness, widths, the A scale, the height and the diameter. The shorter the wheel, the more grounded you're going to feel. The taller the wheel, the more uh, lofty it will feel. Um, you know, when, when you're on a wide wheel, your weight is distributed more. So you're going to feel more grounded on a wider wheel also than on a narrower wheel. Let's move on to the questions. All right, whoa, oh my gosh. Okay, questions. Irrelevance is key asks, what are the gummiest wheels I can buy? My driveway is really messed up. The gummy wheels, they, they're originally called the gummy wheels, now we call them the classic wheels. Um, this is the classic outdoor wheel, 78A. Um, this is a like very resilient, very bouncy wheel. It's gonna absorb all the cracks and shocks of all of the crappy surface that you're skating on. Um, I don't mean to say crappy, I just mean like the rough surface, the, the, the rocks. You don't, we, rocks aren't skaters friends, you know? You want a smooth sur as, as smooth as you can get so that you can feel the freest. So uh, if you're on a rough, crumbly surface, you're definitely gonna wanna get the Moxie Classic wheel. All right, Leiluni asks, can I sand down my fundays to give them crispier edges? Uh, like if you have a wheel lathe, you could, uh, you, you know, I wouldn't recommend, I wouldn't recommend to anybody sanding down their wheels or changing it. I would just recommend purchasing a trick wheel because it's thinner and it has a, um, it has a wider contact patch. You're probably just looking for the 59 millimeter trick wheel. I wouldn't go through all that work. That's a lot of work. Uh, my dad has a wheel lathe. He, he brings it to a skate camp. Um, outdoor or near hardness, narrow dance wheel suggestions. So I would suggest our 55 millimeter trick wheel for dance skating. Wait up. Okay. Oh, awesome question. Uh, squittier news. If you are on a wider truck, so wider, that, there is a trend of like vert skaters putting a wider truck on their roller skates. Now, when you do that, just so you know, like the action is not designed for that. So the plates, like the, the distance between the kingpin and the pivot cup matter a lot. So the leaning and turning and like the tension that you're putting on that pivot cup, it's gonna put a, lot, a different tension than its intended use. And so we can't, as manufacturers, recommend that you do that because it's not intended for that use. What I found though is that the, the wider the wheel, the way, you know, if you are going to extend the width of a truck, the wide, like you want a narrower wheel because you want less contact patch to compensate for the wider surface area that your weight is being distributed on. Uh, Sparkly Jade, did I answer all your width questions? I'm going to tell you that these wheels are like, I have, these wheels are the best outdoor wheels. They just simply are. These are made by the most, the highest quality urethane. And there, the shape is just very, it's perfect for resilient, resiliency, feeling free on a rough surface. Uh, fun day, I would say, is decent to use at the rink. Um, if you want to feel more of a soft surface like wood, you're going to want to use a harder wheel. This is the wheel that I would recommend for beginners for outdoor skating. Um, I 
Yeah, Sandra Starr. I would say that. I would say that the um, that the, the all of our wheels are made for any weights of skating. All right, as soon as I'm finished answering the wheel questions, which there are many of them in here, so I'm just gonna skip around um, and try to answer the most, the, the mo the most pertinent ones, um, then we can talk about whatever y'all want, like pads and bearings. Um, I would say Jason Taylor 70 is, Jason Taylor asks, is a 70 millimeter wheel too big? And I would say that on some plates it actually is, and you don't want, and if you are going to be using a really big wheel, then you're just gonna wanna make sure that like, so if you've got a line in your wheel, this is a very uh, common question. Uh, I mean, <sighs> all right, um, if you've got a line in your wheel here, that means that the wheel is rubbing on the mounting bolts right here. So we sand down the mounting bolts. A great mounter will make sure that these are very flush. So the mounting bolt, if they're like jagged edge, then you're going to want to take your wheels off, get a file, and file the mounting bolts down flat. If you've got a line or you're going to want to tighten your trucks, temper the short like the short solution is to tighten your trucks because the so the the more loose your trucks the the closer they're going to come to these mounting bolts and the 70 millimeter wheels may come very close to the mounting bolts i'm gonna just uh put that on there for you and show you what i'm talking about All right, Christy C. asks, would fun days be the best for skate park trick skating as well as dancing and outdoor cruising? It seems like the perfect hybrid for all the fun things. Yeah, it really is. Um, the fun day wheel, I would suggest, like if you're gonna be doing outdoor dancing and skating, use the fun day wheel. Um, this wheel is fine to skate short distances too. It's just going to be a little, it's gonna be a little rumblier. There's other brands there that, out there that tote like the best quality urethane that I've used like just to skate outdoors on and it is, it is like really, uh, these are intended for that use. All of our urethanes are not gonna break down, they're not going to flat spot easily. Uh, you would really have to be like sketching and and trying and t stopping to get a flat spot on any of our wheels. Did I take this off here? All right, Billy Fuss. We'll get to that. Um, Thank you very much for making my quarantine more enjoyable. I love everything related to roller skates. It keeps me inspired and happy. Annie Meow, thank you so much for that comment. Thank you for making my quarantine so much more enjoyable. I've been so nervous to talk about making products and teaching people how to skate um, in front of a camera just because it doesn't feel real. And I've learned that it just takes practice. And... Uh, just takes practice and you all have endured my uh, rambling all over the place and I really appreciate you uh, because it really feels like you're here with me now that I'm I've got a lot of nerves out um, so as you'll see uh, it's much closer here than it is here so if my if I didn't like such a tight truck set setting then um, these wheels may eventually hit here with a hard push. So a 70 millimeter wheel is, as you can see with a tight truck setting, is not too big for skating, but, um, but if you did like a loose truck setting, it might be. So these wheels are gonna be really, they're gonna be fast over time, but also, Hard, it's very hard to be agile and do transitions when you're going fast. Woo! 
Woo! All right, Fundy wheels are available and in stock. Erica McKendry, this is why I shop this brand because you want to help educate us about the skates. <laughs> Thanks, Erica. I'm a skater though. Of course I want to educate you. Like I'm making stuff for my friends and me and I want to make the best stuff because it's, it's just like pure alignment. I care, I love skating. I want to do it every day. I don't ever want to be bored skating so I'm going to always switch it up. And I am just really grateful that you're even interested in listening to the, the journey and looking at the, and listening to the options. And I really hope this information is useful to you. All right, um, so any more questions? I'm gonna go scroll down to the bottom of the chat here. Um, how would the two trick wheels feel different with the heights? BJ Evans asks this question. Um, so what, what BJ is asking is, um, why are there two different trick wheels? It's not color. Color is not important to wheels at all like doesn't affect the wheels. Maybe, um, I mean, aesthetically, the color changes the wheels uh, and some colors will fade. Um, all graphics scratch off. Like we have paid extra money to keep the most beautiful graphics on here, you know, to protect them from the sun. And I'm sorry to burst anyone's bubble, but graphics eventually all come off. Um, so we do play with you know, what we can do with a wheel. Like if you zoom in on the Funday wheel, there's some swirliness there. They're like tie-dye wheels. Um, but yeah, graphics flake off. The, uh, these um, are two different heights. So you'll see that the green one is taller than the tan one. And the, the, chain, the, the difference is the lower, the shorter the wheel, the more grounded you're going to feel. So this is 55 millimeters tall, and this one is 59 millimeters tall. So you're gonna feel more lofty, but you're also gonna go faster because it's taller. There's gonna be quicker acceleration on a shorter wheel. So it's going to get to pick up like the fastest speed in the quickest amount of time because it's shorter. You're gonna feel more balanced and stable on a short wheel. Um, both of them, are pretty narrow. So they're gonna be great for dance and for ramp skating. And they're also um, cut on the inside because uh, to make it easier to lock in on grinds. So they're not gonna bounce on the coping. It's not gonna be, um, for instance, a wheel that has like a flat edge on the inside is not going to be as easy to get up onto the coping. Um, yeah, the shorter the wheel, the more grounded you're gonna feel. The taller the wheel, the more away from the ground you're gonna feel. Would I be able to still use my gummy wheels for a rink for the beginners? Yes, you can use an outdoor wheel at the rink. They're not gonna break, they're not gonna not work, they're just gonna be harder like on your body. Like the softer the wheel, the on the harder, on the smoothest surface is going to feel like you're pushing through marshmallows. So if you want a really amazing workout, go ahead, by all means, put these wheels on at the roller rink. You are going to work your butt off. But if you want to glide and feel and generate wind and, and just really feel the music and not have such a hard workout, you're gonna want a harder, smoother wheel. Uh, thank you so much, Svenja Henselman says, Hey, I'm from Nuremberg and I love your energy and I'm so grateful to find your channel. Please subscribe to the channel. I am not stopping this. I'm slowly getting hooked on telling you everything, all telling you everything about the product line and all the reasons why we made what we did and divulging in the story and the journey of making of making the products. Um, I, lo I'm, I love this stuff. I love talking about it. And please subscribe to the channel because we've got a lot of content coming out every day. Last night we uh, showed, we posted a, uh, last night we posted a video about how the Moxie name came about. 
Um, and we credit our UPS driver, Mike, and please check out that video. It's really cute. It came out last night. We were doing some spring cleaning and the UPS, there was just a magical moment where the deli where our UPS uh, delivery person came and visited and we got to tell the story. And Bob, you caught it all on camera and we posted it yesterday. So please subscribe to our channel. I'm um, so glad, Radia, thank you very much. Um, I'm glad that it's been helpful. Uh, we'll get into it. We'll do a wheel talk on bearings uh, at another time. Okay, uh, Jason Taylor says, I'm shopping for wheels. If the dimensions are the same as what I have now, does the urethane make a noticeable difference? And yes, the, the urethane, so if all the dimensions are the same and you're getting something that is made by someone who's trying to make a, like a, 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 fact, a, a manufacturer that's trying to just put the cheapest out there, then the quality of the urethane, the formula is going to, you're going to feel the difference. I have tested literally over the past 15 years, thousands of different kinds of wheels. Um, like I, uh, uncountable different types of wheels and from all different origins, all different places. And some, your, not all your things are created equally. You can have a 97A wheel in 10 different compounds and some cheap wheels are impregnated with like impurities. Like it almost feels like a racer material or rubber. Um, there's like some, some like suppliers from other places that we don't purchase from put impurities in wheels and you can feel the difference. It doesn't feel true. It's not a true roll. It wobbles. So yes, to answer your question, not all urethane is created equally. There's quality, there's quality urethanes and then there's um, unquality urethanes and the quality urethanes all come from here where skateboarding and skating, like really the innovation and manufacturing uh, is 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 mostly made here, uh, where where skating can happen all year round. Um, Courtney Shove, mine got lost in the chat. Does weight affect the hardness? Like the heavier you are, the harder the wheel. I've heard it and asked a lot. P oh, thank you so much, Shove. Yes, weight does affect the wheel. However, if you are um, Uh, okay, uh, sorry, I'm getting some text messages um, I'm and uh, notes about the talk. Uh, they're not saying wrap it up. <laughs> um, they're just sending me more important questions that you're sending. Um, not more important than this question. This question is very important. And it comes from Courtney Shove. Courtney Shove, uh, the weight does affect, it's not so much weight, it's pressure. So for instance, a skater like Sheepish Skater is extremely hard on her skate products. She, for the way that she skates, it, she's able to put a lot of energy and push and strength into the wheels and it puts a lot of tension on the product. So she's gone from nylon plates to metal plates because, uh, because because of wobble and strength and and uh, a metal anything metal is not going to a metal plate is not going to flex. So when it comes to wheels, it's the same thing. The wider the wheel, the more stable you're going to feel, and the more your weight is going to be distributed amongst this. But you could be uh, you could be heavier in pounds, like heavier in weight, and be timid on your wheels. So. You want, um, I would say that like weight does affect the wheel. Um, the, but it also, the width is going to affect how the weight takes the wheel. And if it's a narrower wheel and you've got a lot of weight coming down and that is like strength weight, it's pressure. It's either coming from the way that you skate in strength and the and um, the weight you may be carrying on top of the wheel. The wider the wheel, the more weight is distributed am amongst the wheel like amongst the surface of the wheel. So you could have a narrower contact patch and a wide wheel and feel much more stable and agile. It may be the perfect combination for you. Um, and then if you have a really strong stride and you put a lot of pressure into your wheels, then you're gonna want 
um, you're going to want a, probably a harder wheel that's not going to flex as much. And if you are a heavier person, but you're lighter on your wheels, then shopping for a wider wheel or a harder wheel may not be as important to someone who is also strong and heavy and putting a lot of weight into their wheels. Does that answer your question, Shav? I would like a lolly boot and a funday wheel. What kind of plate would you recommend for dance, parks, and tricks? So, Christy C., I hope that uh, the question, the awesome. I hope that my answer that I just gave to Courtney Shove uh, was helpful to you. So, weight also affects the feel, like the weight of the product affects the feeling of the way that you're skating. So, if you have a really heavy skate, you're not going to feel as agile. So if you're trying to shop for a plate that's not going to flex, you really like, you want to make sure that you're not at, you don't want to add a bunch of weight if you really want a light, free feeling experience. So a lot of vert skaters don't mind weight in their feet. And this is a vert ramp, like for ramp skating, which is a vert ramp is like a really big U shape. And you become light as the vert, as the transition changes, you know, you have to change, you adjust your body to skate up a wall and the weight become, leaves your feet. So you put a lot of pressure and speed into the, into the wall so that you can feel and maneuver and go up the wall. But the less, but the w less weight is going to be there. So as you enter the air, you know, the contact patch is not as important. The cert like, because there's no contact when you're in the air, airing on a vert ramp. So therefore weight doesn't affect, weight actually works for you in that sense, because you're gonna wanna feel your feet under your, you're gonna wanna feel the weight in your feet when you're doing the tricks. So I hope I'm, um, I hope I answered a lot of questions today. If you learned something, please hit the like button on this video. I would really love to see if this rambling talk was beneficial. I know that when um, a lot of information, I don't want to flood you with information, but I feel like I have a lot of information to share. And there's an entire spectrum when it comes to the durometer and hardness, the width, the shape, the design, um, and then also like the, who you are as a skater, uh, whether you are, whether you're, a, whether you know how to exert a lot of pressure into your skate stride, um, the weight that you are, the uh, agility and balance that you have, um, that you're putting onto your skates, like people and and. <laughs> And the more confident you are even, it comes down to mentality. Like if you're really confident, then you may be confident like pushing into that stride. If you're not confident, you may be really light on your feet because you are focusing on finding balance and listening to the ground and, and adjusting to the new like world on wheels that you're experiencing in the environment and the distractions around you. So there's just a whole entire spectrum of wheels and people and brains and there's millions of possibilities that these wheels can come in and I try to make uh, like we're growing I, I feel like Moxie is growing a market here and we're trying to make products for the way that the market is changing and we're trying to make it um, make it for the most amount of people that it's going to benefit which is why we started with an outdoor wheel because we I really believe that roller skates are the most practical way to get around um, they're, you can dance on them, you can, tran like you, you can, they're stable, you've got four points of contact under your foot, uh, so they're not, they don't require as much, um, as much balance, you know, you, you can almost forget that you're on them, they're so comfortable, your ankles are free to move, so you can dance in them, um, roller skates just are so freaking red and like there's so many different ways to use them There's unlimited ways to use them if we look at them as shoes. So we're gonna continue to make products to um, To satisfy the customers so I can't wait to go on like through this chat and Look at all the suggestions and all the questions because all of the engagement that we have with our customers will change the way that the moxie brand is developing product so please like tell us what you want um, 
and we will do our, I will do my very best to make it for you. Because uh, we really want you to enjoy your roller skating experience. So we want it to be a life extension. Like this is a life extension. Uh, you can grow old with skating and feel young. We can grow young. The longer the live and the, the longer we live, the, the better we feel in our bodies, the longer you live. Like the more you want to be here, the longer you're going to want to be here. And skating changes that. And it's a heavy deal. It's a big deal. It's an important thing. Like we're here and we want to feel and we want to love and enjoy life and roller skating is one way that has dramatically affected me and a lot of friends and I'm sure you out there that are interested in listening to this so please speak up tell us what you want and we're going to <laughs> we're going to grow young together and develop a lot of skills and products together and extend our whole lives doing this all right let's talk about whatever you want <laughs> thank you so much for our joining my wheel talk. Um, I apologize if it was rambling and all over the place. Um, now I'm really going to focus on the questions. Woo! The pink vice versa tool is out. Yes. Oh, we actually, now we make it in black and teal, but yeah, the pink one, this is an old one that's been laying around. All this stuff is old stuff that's been laying around. I have turned into my father. <laughs> this is my father's garage, his garage. I mean, this is my garage, but my father's garage looks exactly like this, but it's all skateboards. So, uh, yeah, um, all my old stuff is laying around. Lots of samples are laying around. If you follow, like subscribe to our YouTube channel, this is usually where I'm making videos for uh, during these times and the whole history of the Moxie brand is inside of here and I've got lots of things to reference. I've got the Heartless Wheel which is the very first wheel that I ever made before the Moxie brand ever started. Um, I don't think that this wheel is around anymore but this is the very first wheel that I made. I just upgraded from bunnies to lollies. Um, Christy Azevedo, and I feel super different and wobbly and scared. Any tips of what I could do? So, oh, bunnies to lollies. So, yeah, oh, I totally relate to this feeling. So, when you go from bunnies, so the bunny, beach bunny, has a short, narrower wheel, so you're going to start agilely. <laughs> you're going to feel really agile on a short, thin, stubby wheel. So, when you're changing from a more free wheel to a more stable wheel, you're going to get benefits of resilience and um, you're going to feel softer and faster. Like you're going to feel faster on this bigger wheel because it's taller and wider and more stabler, but you're also going to feel more grounded. And the wobbly that you're feeling is um, you're covering more, there's more surface area. When you compare, your weight is distributed over more wheel. So when you compare like two lines of wheel, so this was like an original Funday wheel that we sampled. And this is the actual Funday wheel. So when you, when you think about it this way, like we've got four wheels under each foot. So we've got a lot of, a lot of contact with the ground, which in my opinion, roller skaters know more about wheels than anyone else using wheels because we feel more wheel because there literally are more wheels. So when you look at like, if you put two bunny wheels next to each other and then you compared it to the two classic wheels, which I'm going to do here with these two versions of the Funday wheels you'll see that you're shaving off almost half of an entire wheel when you go to a wider wheel. So you're feeling so much more and what's going to happen is you're gonna feel more stable and faster when you go taller from the bunny wheel to the lolly wheel, but you're going to also, um, I lost my train of thought, crappy, darn it. Um, you're gonna go faster on a bigger, wider wheel, but on a uh, shorter, so you're gonna feel faster on the wider wheel. Oh, it's gonna require patience. Ah, that's what I meant to say. When you go to a bigger wheel, it requires more patience. So like if you go from ice skates to roller skates, you know, ice skates really glide. They cut, they literally cut into the ice. They, uh, there's benefits and then there's not so benefits, <laughs> disadvantages. You're gonna feel really free on ice, but ice isn't exactly convenient. Um, you have to go to a place to go glide on ice. So roller skates are convenient. It's like 
you know, you find a hill on roller skates, it's like skiing without a lift ticket. It's so convenient to be on roller skates. It's, it's for everybody. And, but when you're going from ice skates to roller skates, because you've got so much more surface area, your weight's being distributed on much more surface area, then you're gonna, it's going to require patience. You're going to have to look for the benefits. Uh, you're going to have to uh, tr like try different things. And some things will be easier and, and there will be advantages, but then some things will be disadvantages. Josie's Pets, what is the best way to upgrade my jungle moxies for outdoor skating? I would uh, take your, oh, I'll show you how to take wheels off too. So when you're changing your wheel, um, if you wanna change your jungle or your bunny, you're gonna take a tool. This is the Vice Versa Skate Key. It's five bucks. It is the most convenient skate key ever. It's skate tool ever. And the reason why uh, we invented this is because I went on a rollout and I lost a wheel and I had to skate home on seven wheels. And I was like, dang it, if I just had a little convenient skate tool on my keys, because I've always got my keys, then I would be able to tighten and change my wheels on the go all the time. So this skate tool is the most convenient tool you can have. It's called the Vice Versa Skate Key. It comes in teal and black, other colors to come out soon. Um, you take the wheel off and that's the axle. And it almost looks like, you know, you just removed your tooth from your mouth. <laughs> And if you wanna put a, uh, or that's what it looks like to me. If you wanna put a different wheel on there. So if you wanna upgrade from the bunny, a soft wheel to a bit of a harder wheel, and you wanna feel the ground more, then you're gonna to wanna to change to the Funday wheel. Um, you can change the bearings just by using the uh, end of the trucks. All of our, none of our wheels come with aluminum hubs anymore. So an aluminum hub, you don't want to do this with an aluminum hub because it will ruin the threads on your trucks. But to take the bearings out, you're going to find that little bearing seat we were talking about earlier. There's a little space in between the bearings and you're going to find an angle inside so that the wheel, the axle is halfway through the wheel. And then you're just going to pull towards you and all of our wheels easily come out. Take the bearing out, and then if you want to put, um, oh, that wasn't the right wheel. If you want to put the bearing back onto the wheel, <laughs> like I do, you're just going to put the bearing onto the axle and then press together, and then you put the bearing in. And then if you want to upgrade from the lolly or the bunny to the Funday wheel, you just put on, uh, if you want to upgrade your jungles or your bunnies, you want to get the Funday wheel or the trick wheel. Um, for outdoor, I would recommend more of the uh, Funday wheel. And then you tighten the axle. So, again, to change your wheels, you're going to get a vice versa skate key, loosen your axle nut all the way until it either falls off or you take it off with your finger. So you take your axle nut off, you take the wheel off. If you want to replace, put the bearings into a new wheel, you just pry them off. And then you press them into, what wheel do we want? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's do the classic wheel. So then you sandwich the wheel with bearings. And then you press it on there. To do the outer one, you just flip the wheel press it together. Now, oops, that's... <laughs> All right, you can also do this with your fingers. So the, it, the, um, <laughs> the classic wheel has a, uh, um, a radi, like a, it has, it's inset, it's, there's a lot of material here. For <laughs> How do I say this? It's a, a radial shape, meaning that um, it's inset. So the there's a lot of space here. Do you see the space here? It makes it, I make it actually makes it harder to put the inside of the bearing inside it, the bearing on the inside of the wheel. There's space here so that you can get the benefits of having a wide, stable wheel. But then we shave, you know, it's um, 
you all it also makes it lighter so if this was like very if it didn't cut in it would be heavier so we always want to design a wheel for um le for less weight when it's outdoor wheel all right so once you got the bearings in there their bearings may appear to be in there but they're not in there perfect like into their seats they're made with seats so you press it in and then you're going to seat the bearing with the axle and the nut so you tighten it you can hear the little air pockets those are little air pockets closing up you close it until you start to feel a little resistance don't go past that then you back it out so that you've got a freewheel spin and there's no wiggle on there. I think this one's wiggling here. There you go. It'll be quiet if you pull it this way. And that's how you take your wheels on and off. Um, okay, so the toe stop fell off yesterday. I could use a little bit of help. Uh, let me show you. So when they come, be sure to look at our unboxing video that Legs has created in our YouTube, vid in our YouTube channel. Um, just go to the search, look for unboxing. There's a wonderful unboxing that shows you how to check your skates straight from the box to make sure that this isn't going to happen. Someone, uh, I'm sorry, on asked about, somebody on here on the chat asked about uh, this. Um, their toe stops, your toe stops, if not tightened properly, can fall out. Um, they will unscrew eventually as you're, if they're not tight in there and uh, the washer is not pointed in the right way and it's not all pressured on and pressured into the, um, the insert. So this, in, this is the hole that the toe stop goes into. And it comes there, each toe stop, they're adjustable. So you can adjust the, how close or how, how close they are to the ground. The further away from the ground, the more weight you can put into your toes. The closer they are to the ground, the quicker you can find the stop. So typically really advanced skaters want um, a shorter stem so that they can quickly put weight into their toes because they're very comfortable dipping into their toes. So you wanna put the, the nut on first. So make sure that the nut's on first and it's not flipped another way. And you go to the place that you want it in. I'm going to go all the way in because I like to stop really quickly. And then there's a waved washer that, or a combed washer, and you want the wave or the teeth facing up because we're going to smash this washer into the plate to create a bite so that the setting on the toe stop doesn't work away. It doesn't move. So that's what those washers are there for. All right, so then you wanna hold the washer close to the nut. It's gonna spin. So I'm holding onto the washer for as far as I can so that it doesn't fall down. There we go. Okay. Then once I got it on there, you're going to take the, the crab tool that looks like a crab um, that comes in the box and you're going to tighten right as hard as you can. As tight as you can. So you shouldn't be able to really... F I'm doing it with my muscles and usually that works. But you don't want to be able to loosen it with your own strength. You want to be able to make sure that it's very tight and secure and check them every time you go skating because as you put a lot of pressure on the toe stops, they can tend to loosen up. The difference between the bunny wheels and the original wheels. So if you, we're going to post this after I'm finished. Oh my gosh, it's almost two hours. <laughs> it seems, um, uh, we're going to post this and we'll, uh, Likely chop it up into bits so it's easy for you to access, or we'll put timestamps on the video so that you can see, um, you can compare widths and durometers and, uh, and heights and hardnesses and contact patches and all those things that we went into. But the difference between the bunny wheel and the classic wheel, 
to answer your question, Dominique Canales is the bunny wheel is short and stubby and uh, n it's narrower than the classic wheel, which is here on the bunny. Oh, here we go. The classic wheel is taller, so it's gonna be faster. It's wider, so it's going to feel more stable. But it's also taller, so it's going to lose stability. So this is going to feel, it's still going to feel stable, but because it's narrower, um, you'll have more agility. So um, they're, both they're both 78A, so they're great for outdoors. But this one's going to feel more cruiser friendly and this is going to feel more easier, it's easier to dance in. Um, the Merry Maiden, if you have toe covers on the toes, in between the washer and skate, the toe stop may become loose over time. Um, that is true. But uh, so when you do a toe cover, you want to make sure that the toe piece is on closest to the toe stop so that you're not messing with the bite that the washer and it, the, the washer is, the washer bites into the plate so you don't want to put leather in between that, that'll loosen it. So yeah, um, Gitana Deneff, this may have been answered already. It's, this has been almost two hours. We've been talking about wheels <laughs> and we have just as many people as we've had when we first started. So um, hopefully the information, so I'm just gonna review information as, you, uh, as we're coming on later. But the Funday wheels are a hybrid wheel. They're great for outdoors. They're made for outdoors and skate parks. So you can skate outside of your house and straight to the skate park. Um, they're 92A, that's not advertised, because a typical 92A wheel feels soft, like too soft for the skate park. But honestly, they're not, because they're made of a very high quality urethane that's been tested all around the world with traveling. And they are just a very great all-purpose wheel. And we wanted people to feel the quality of the wheel before um, advertising so that advertising the durometer and the reason why is because as I we talked about earlier like the urethanes are they are all different you know no urethane is made the same even if you have the same dimensions and the same durometer the quality of the urethane can still it, it still changes it depends like how quality the urethane is and what the urethane is made for yeah the fun days are a really wonderful hybrid wheel you're welcome, Jatana. Fashionista 99, I got the flower toe stops in the mail and they are adorable. And Fashionista is talking about the brake pedals. And we call them the brake pedals because they are brakes. <laughs> I never understood why they're called toe stops. Like, why not just brakes? And then, um, yeah, and they're flowers, so they're pedals. This may have already been answered, BJ Evans, but can we put any of the moxie wheels on any of the boxy boots? Absolutely. So the, all the products are made to be interchangeable with one another. So yes, you can put any of the wheels and bearings on any of the moxie uh, plates and boots. No, and no one needs to apologize for any repeat questions. This is really, it's fun to do. It's really fun to engage and interact with you. Okay, the Beach Bunny shipping times. We've been um, copying and pasting these times inside of our Instagram feed. So if you go on um, our Instagram at Moxie Roller Skates, we sent out a newsletter uh, to all. So this question is, is coming from Planty in regard, oh, I'm sorry. This question is um, no longer able to be found. Uh, and I apologize for not referring to you by name. Um, but the bun, oh, here we go, Planty. Planty asked the shipping times. Shipping times for Beach Bunnies went out on a news newsletter email to every single one of our customers. And then it's also being copied and pasted in all of our Instagram questions about them. Um, so the shipping times are accessible. Our customer service department is under crazy amounts of tension. We went from a staff of five to 17 in the last week and a half. 
So we are trying our darndest to get to all of the questions as quickly as possible, and everybody is working from home. So um, the lines are not open on the weekends, and the inbox is not being answered to on the weekends, but uh, starting tomorrow, we'll get right back to all of your questions um, and uh, customer service um, issues and uh, comments. <laughs> I've had my lollies for a little, okay, Ashley Woot. I've had my lollies for a little over a year now and I'm looking to upgrade my plates. What plates do you recommend for someone who skates mostly outdoors and isn't quite a beginner anymore? I really love um, the thrust plate. I, that's why we put it on the lolly. And if you've already had the thrust plate, then you can upgrade to another Powerdyne plate. All the Powerdyne plates um, are, they all come from, so the Rydell wheelhouse. And um, I really love the bunny plate. Like the marble plate is great. It's one that I'm interested in um, selling aftermarket and we're under some, we're in some interesting times right now. So um, we can't exactly do a whole lot of product development right now with all the factories closed. But uh, I really love the marble plate. And even though it is on the, the, it's on the Panther boot, it comes on the Panther, the jungle and the bunny. And it's a metal, and it is an aluminum, it's, a, it's an aluminum metal plate that does not flex. So if you're asking what is a plate that is, um, that's not going to flex, you can use uh, either the marble plate or the neo plate. So the neo plate is sold separately. The neo plate is also a really wonderful plate. The bunny plate does not come, the marble plate does not come with quality urethane bushings. Um, the qual the most, the, the highest quality urethane bushings. The highest quality urethane bushings are found on the Neo, the Fuse, the Reactor series. So the Reactor Pro and the Reactor Neo. The Reactor Pro is a very uh, nice plate that has an adjustable pivot arm. So that's going to change the action and we can get into those conversations later um, because I don't have all those plates right now in front of me to talk about. But I would recommend if you want one step up from the thrust or the marble plate to go to the Neo plate. That is a very stable aluminum plate um, that is made for you know all the grind components and all the wheels that we make. Um, it's not a, a plate that's ever had any issues with with wheels or any of the grinding components that are out there. I can't. Um, I cannot recommend. Because I don't make products for other brands, I can't recommend their products or tell you how universal they are. I can tell you that anything under the Rydell wheelhouse, in, so anything that is made by uh, the roller skate manufacturer Rydell is all universal and works, works with any of the other brands that come. So like Radar Wheels and Antic Boots will fit Moxie Wheels and Moxie Boots. So anything... Um, Anything that's coming from Rydell is all made to communicate, work, and be adjusted with one another, combined with one another. And yes, yeah, Sabrina, the Moxie Ski Camp is still going on in September. They're actually both moved to September. So the East Coast one is during uh, the first weekend of September, and the West Coast one is the third week, uh, the, tw the weekend of the 24th. Fashionista 99, everyone wants to skate during quarantine. And on Wednesdays, <clears throat> I'm teaching... <clears throat> okay, I'm losing my voice, talking for way too long. On Wednesdays, I'm teaching roller skating lessons in my driveway. We, uh, if you check out our YouTube channel, we've done beginners lessons, intermediate skills, uh, advanced skills, crazy legs tutorial. Um, we're about to drop a, a spinning tutorial on three different types of spins. We cover hurricane kicks, 360s in our intermediate and advanced classes. Um, so be sure to check those out. How hard is it to change plates <clears throat> yourself if you're really talented with tools? It looks like four screws. Yeah, if you're really talented with tools, then you shouldn't have any trouble changing 
your plates. Um, if you have anything in the reactor geometry, the holes all align with one another. Um, so if you're buying a boot only, then I, you're you're re, you're drilling brand new holes. And um, the position that you want your front wheels is under the widest part of the ball of your foot. So your front wheel, front and side wheel is going to align directly under the ball of your foot. And the back wheels will be right underneath of your heel. So you want to match, um, get the right plate size. Make sure that you're getting the right plate size. You drill holes. Uh, you're going to mark the holes on the holes that are on the plate. And then, yeah, it's you buy a mounting kit. You drill the holes in the right places. You can use some, um, there are actual guides that we can, we can make available some guides for you to make this easier. But if you know tools and you know where the wheels should be positioned, it shouldn't be too difficult to mount your own skates. In fact, in the 80s, um, there were speed skaters that would refuse to let anybody touch their plates because they all mounted their plates themselves. So in the whole new wheel world, I imagine that people will become very sensitive to where they want their wheels and they will um, learn how to use the tools and learn how to mount their wheels, their skates themselves. You're so welcome. Joy Herb says, thank you so much for being so engaged and posting so much during these crazy times. It's very inspiring. Yes, it is very crazy times right now, but um, nothing is going to break down my spirit for skating. Nothing. There is nothing. Life is about joy and spreading joy. And roller skating is one of the easiest ways to do that. You're so welcome, Taboo. Um, is Moxie hiring for remote customer service positions or in the factory when it reopens? Yes, the factory is located in Red Wing, Minnesota. And you can send an application to be a seamstress to Rydell Skate's website. Um, I, I would guess that my answer, <laughs> based on the situation, yeah, we are always looking for seamstresses. Um, we are also looking for customer service representatives. Now is a great time to put in an application. You can put that in at cs at moxierollerskates.com. And we definitely wanna see, you know, if you have a video application, that would be probably the best thing working for you right now because roller skating is growing and we are, we just hired a whole bunch of people that need to be trained pretty quickly. So, um, because we've got uh, a lot of skaters um, being made right now that have a lot of questions. And yes, we are, uh, we are growing right now. That is the truth. And if you're looking for a position in customer service, um, yes, we'd love to see your video interview explaining all of your experience in, with skate products and customer service. How do I emotionally cope with falls? Oh my gosh. First, learn, practice falling. Uh, emotionally, you know, I've had a major injury that has taken me out of skating for six months. Actually, it was a year and a half. Um, I, was, I couldn't walk for six months uh, normally. And I broke my femur bone and it didn't happen skating. It happened on a motorcycle accident. And um, it made me appreciate skating and create the finest tuned relationship with the weirdest like emotion that you can experience which is fear and fear is you know a hard emotion to get a good relationship with but once you hone in on it you are less um you're less risky and you learn to appreciate learning slowly and you learn your body and how it changes from day to day our bodies change every single day I know this from practicing yoga every single day. In fact, I actually have to go in a few minutes because I've got yoga teacher training starting in a little bit of time. But um, your body changes every day. The best thing you can do is learn how to fall. Don't put your hands down. Practice with protective gear. Learn how to, learn how to fall first. You will learn that um, the, more com the more calm you are, the more comfortable you are, the, the easier it is to find balance. The stiffer you are, the harder your body is. The harder it is to recover from balance, the harder you're gonna drop. You wanna drop like a sandbag, you know, soft and with your weight distributed, not like a rock. If you drop like a rock, you can break, and we don't wanna break. So when you're falling, practice falling in the grass, 
using pads, go to your soft bits. Um, be sure to hug yourself on the way down, I like to say. Pick a cheek, go to your natural soft pieces um, that we were made with, like our butt cheeks and our side bodies and our sides, not our knobs. You know, you wanna learn to not rely on your knobs to fall on. And, um, and emotionally, you just learn slow, be patient. You know, all the things that you hear about what it's like to deal with people and be a better employee and a better boss. You know, you learn to be patient. All brains are different. All people are different. All bodies respond differently. And everybody changes. That's a fact. So your body changes every day with how much sleep you've had and how much water you've had. So you just really um, want to get a good relationship with falling and fear and risk taking while you're skating. The best moxie wheels for skate park skating are the fun day wheels. Those are really intended for skate park skating. These are also, the trick wheels are also intended for skate park skating. But I would say, I would just guess, since skate park skating is newer for roller skating, most of us are newer to skate park skating. And um, you want a wheel that is more forgiving. Um, the trick wheels are a bit harder, and the funny wheels are, are a little softer. So you're going to um, be more stable in a wider wheel. Uh, the contact patch is thinner to adjust for the width and so much grounding. So you're gonna feel, you're still gonna feel free and agile at the skate park, but it's also a bit softer. Um, so these are, these are great skate, they're both great skate park wheels. But if you're more of a beginner or intermediate skater, I would suggest the fun day wheel, especially since you can skate to the skate park there more easily. I do suggest all of our skates, uh, the jackboot is made for like um, ankle shock, you know, the, the jackboot is made for ankle security, so jumping stairs, um, pumping hard, um, the jackboot's made for skate park skating. So I wouldn't say that the jackboot is made for beginners because beginners probably aren't going to the skate park. More intermediate advanced skaters go to the skate park. So the lollies are made for, are, the lollies and the bunnies are made for beginners. They've got a lot, they have ankle, they still have ankle support, um, but they are also free in the ankles. So what's great about all the boxy skates is the, the heel lift. You just, if you feel like, if you went from a shoe to a heel lift, you feel lighter and more freer with a heel lift because your body weight, we're moving forward. So you feel more of a propensity to go backwards. And if you have a heel, then you can easily access the heel and put the weight back into the balls of your feet, which is really like the stable place that you put all of your balance in the balls of your feet. That's like your, the balls of your feet or your con control center when you're skating. The documentary I saw, oh yeah, thanks Arianna. You're, I think maybe someone before you suggested that too. But yeah, the documentary Faces of Adventure is a mini doc that is made all about me. It's called Estrogen and it's um, about, yeah, the why I started the skate brand and it won the Newport Beach Film Festival last year, or this past year. The Funday Durometer is 92, which is um, Dr. Gerard, Gerard, I uh, apologize if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly, but the Funday wheel is a 92. And um, we went over in the beginning of this video lots of different aspects of wheels. The shape, the lip, the width, the contact patch versus the general width, the core, the hub, the hardness, the height, the durometer. Um, there's so many aspects of a wheel and I wouldn't judge a wheel just by one rating or one number or any two numbers because all urethane is not created equally and you really, it's, it's good to test all different kinds of wheels because that's going to test your balance. Every time you change your wheels, it's like a whole new experience. If you're looking for a reason to... Um, if you're looking for something to inspire motivation with all the skills that you already have, like not reaching outward, you know, but I, I love to be inspired by other people. Um, I like, I, you know, I've got role models. Um, my yoga teacher, Teresa, is one of my biggest role models. Uh, Teresa is a couple, like three or four years older than me, and she is just such a, 
I don't know, just such a go-getter. And um, I'm really inspired by other, I am inspired by other people. But if you're looking, if you can't, if you're not, if you've exhausted your resources and you can't find inspiration outside of yourself, the quickest, easiest way to find inspiration for skating inside of yourself is by changing your product, changing your wheels. It's going to throw you off just that little bit more to be able to find balance or find agility um, find balance to do different moves or find stability to do different styles of skating. Thanks, Joe. Oh, yeah. Yes, I've got yoga class. Thank you. All right, I'm going to get off of here. It's been two hours. That was a lot. Thank you very much. Um, yes, Adventures of Estrogen um, Adventure Aid. It's on the Adventure Aid YouTube channel. Um, and thank you. Uh, thanks very much for tuning in. There's tons of questions. I'm going to turn this off. Um, and please uh, transfer your questions onto the chat. So uh, I always answer. I, I, I read all of the questions. I can't speak for products that I don't make. And um, I've tested lots of off brands and products that I haven't made. Um, but I can't speak for them. So I don't. I speak for the products that we make. And so hopefully your questions are related to Moxie. I read every single comment that is on our, our YouTube videos. I read every single one of them. So if you've got anything that you want to say to me, go ahead and put it in the comments because I'm going to read them. And I'm going to answer them to the best of my abilities. So to the best of my knowledge, I will answer um, as many questions as I can. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a beautiful Sunday. And um, please come on Wednesday to learn how to skate with me. And I will, uh, yeah, bye. Two hours of talking. Holy mackerel. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll be posting this and chip chopping it up so that you can um, get the briefs on all of this. And be sure to comment like and subscribe to our youtube channel because i'm going to continue to talk my brains out about all of this stuff that i am so passionate and passionate about because all these products are so near and dear to my heart and i just love talking about it thank you very very much appreciate you all love you all remember to subscribe to our channel comment thanks for chatting with me i love you Mwah.